Oh, Weber stole the jump. Weber stole the jump. They're going to give it to Kentucky. Remember at the opening tap, they were the, the jump, the ball was not thrown high enough. This time, Dent wasn't quite ready, and Weber stole it, and it cost him. By the way, they're each awarded one extra timeout in the right. overtime, so Kentucky will have two, Michigan one, and two in the OT. Two factors, you've got Brown out of the game with an injury for Kentucky, and likewise, on the other end, you've got Jimmy King sitting over there, who's fouled out. Both teams hurt with quality players there. Travis Ford. Weber had it oh, knocked good loose. And underneath, Delk scores. Delk knocked it out of Chris Weber's hands, and you don't see that often. Prickett picked up his fifth. He's out, holding Jawan Howard. Fouls out Billy with nine points. He, you know, he had the, the monster team, of course, uh, against Florida State, but the young man's averaging right at about five a game, so he's above his average there. Did a fine job today playing against uh, little older, more mature players. Going to be a real outstanding player at Kentucky. Already is a darn good one. And real blossom so late in the season. Yep. Juan Howard, a 70% free throw shooter. Does this kid remind you, by the way, of a number 32 named Leitner at all? <laughs> a little bit? Uh, style of play, that is. Yeah, a little, a little different. Howard. That's his first miss. He had been three of three from the line. Well, we talked about the great free throw shooting that Michigan had. Look at Jimmy King. Well, I think he's so disappointed that he's not in there on the floor. Mm -hmm. 73-72, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. on the drive. Lifts it short, gets it back. His first field goal in 12 minutes, 36 seconds. Was that ball touched on the way up the first time? I don't think so. Because he got his own rebound, and it never touched the rim. I have to see the replay on Jim. It was tight. Jalen looking for a shot. Rose, short on the three. On the rebound to four. You've got to be careful here. He'll pull up and take the three. They're, they're, they're cleaning out right now. Clearing out now for Mashburn. He's driving in addition. And, oh, almost a three-point opportunity. Called now against Howard, so Mashburn will shoot two. A very unusual four corners type situation. You put Mashburn up on the top that pulls Howard completely out. You notice Rick Patino, Patino has deployed everybody else on the wings. It makes it impossible to double-team Mashburn. Let's go, fellas, let's go! Mashburn only four of seven from the line. This is, by the way, the first overtime game at the Final Four since Michigan Seton Hall in the championship 1989, four years ago today. Kentucky leads by four. You know, Michigan getting solid on defense, too, back and back. They didn't press, and they come out in a 2-3 zone. Rick Pitino really changing some things now. Both of these coaches did a masterful job with their teams today. By the way, this four-point lead for Kentucky, its largest of the entire game. Howard, oh. hit on a shot. Mashburn fouled him. He pushed him. Mashburn, that's his Out fifth. Now it's not even, Jim. You've got Jimmy King on the bench, Dale Brown on the bench, but now you put the monster on the bench. No question about the foul. He'll foul out with 26, and as you pointed out, as a year ago, he'll have to watch the rest from the sideline. A year ago, that is, in the East Regional Final against Duke. And Jim, what that also does is Rick Pitino had decided in the overtime to go to his form of four corners with Mashburn at the top, which we saw. Now he can no longer use that offensive strategy because the substitute, Martinez, certainly couldn't play that. So look for the ball to be in the hands of Travis Ford the rest of the way. Another inexperienced team on the floor right now for this situation for Kentucky. Martinez, Delk, Dent, and Rhodes. Two 
shots for Howard. Offensive rebound coming in. Tough to block that young man out. Goes up strong on the inside without his buddy Jimmy King on the floor. Jim, look, and I mentioned about Kentucky, and that's that. Here's the move. Patino is right on top of his game. Get he had too much youth on the floor. He comes in with Brasso to get another experienced player who's a scorer. He really didn't have enough pot firepower out there before. Brasso, a junior from Houston, Texas. Michigan, Billy, you said it in the late going of regulation. Critical time for free throws. They've made four of their last nine, and Mrs. Jackson can't even watch. Of course, you'll go to play-by-play -play from Ray Sr. You go back to Brasso's early years. He had 25 against LSU one night with seven threes in the second half. And that's why he's in there now. Not necessarily for threes, but to give some experience and maturity to this club. It's a one-point lead for the Wildcats. 2.25 remaining. Ford knows he needs to put up something here. He's the guy that's left out there that's the starting player that can score. Oh, he dribbled it off the back of his foot. How that foul changed this game, didn't it? Because they could, Michigan just couldn't handle Mashburn in that other offense. 12 on the shot clock. Nice job by Weber. Didn't give Ford a chance. Martinez, one-handed shot. See, they don't have any scoring on the floor. Michigan three on two. Rose in a pinch. Bounced off of Howard's knee, but Weber in the right spot. Now, Michigan can take the lead right here. You'd think they think that inside game again with Weber and Howard and just be patient till they get it. There it goes. Howard over Martinez. Ball slipped out. Touch last by Michigan. You know, Weber didn't have any legs, Jim, to go up for that rebound. You notice that? He, he had was position, anchored, too. He, did. he was anchored to the floor with his feet. He could not get off the ground. But you can't fault him. He's, he's played some kind of game today. And Rick Pitino takes one of his timeouts away. Each team now has one remaining. Jim, here's what I was talking about, Chris Weber. Now watch, he cannot get up off the floor. Remember earlier in the game, I mean, he would have gone up and just grabbed that ball, and his legs just locked on him, and he was anchored to the floor. That's a kind of a shot that Jawan Howard usually makes, yeah. too. He was way too strong. Kentucky has possession and a one-point lead with 123 remaining. And both teams down now to one timeout left. And if you're Patino right now, you want to take as much time off this clock as possible. And you look down on that club that you have on the floor and you say, number one, I'd like to have Ford take the shot if it's available. And Brasso, get yourself loose because you're probably my second choice. And again, I go back to that fifth foul on Mashburn last year against Duke when he wasn't available to be one of the defenders on Christian Leitner, and this year when he's not available to run that uh, that offense that they were employing so well. Each 
team with one timeout. Left, Michigan with the arrow. Dent, Ford, Martinez, Brasso, and Delk on the floor for Kentucky. Michigan answers with Jackson, Weber, Palenka, Howard, and Rose. Well, what's interesting here is you have one starter on the floor, a normal starter on the floor for Kentucky, four normal starters, and Palenka, who has been a starter on the floor for Michigan. Great deal of difference in experience now. Martinez, a quick three, and Delk with the rebound. Palenka five. Palenka bumped into Delk. <laughs> Martinez, you talk about giving a coach heart failure. There was no hesitancy. He came out there and put it right up. And here's the foul. Palenka coming over without question, hit him. Delk will shoot two free throws. And Martinez, that was only his 33rd three-pointer attempt of the year. Shooting well, though, 53%. About the freshman from Brownsville, Tennessee, Tony Delk. A phenomenal oh. scorer in the Tennessee high school ranks in his career. Showed no pressure on those two. 1-10 remaining. Three-point Kentucky lead. How about the confidence Rick Pitino has in various players in, in a given game? It's amazing. Well, oh, there's Martinez and Weber. They're going after it down inside. Jackson driving. Oh, got it. It's that one. Ray Jackson can tie the game with the following free throw. And Jim, what made that is Martinez had to do so much work. You can see him down inside on Weber. See, he's battling, battling Weber. He could not get over in time to get Ray Jackson. By the way, that's their first field goal in the overtime. All of the points had come from the line, Billy. You see, Martinez, he's, he's just hung up there with Chris Weber and just can't get there. Jimmy, Jimmy, King. Jimmy King, his roommate. You talk fellow Texan. Now for the tie with 56 seconds to go. Jordan. Who is it? Yeah, Michigan, Michigan basketball. Patino oh, wants to make a change for defense. Roderick Rhodes coming in. Brasso probably coming out. Too late. Can't get him in the game. for a moment. Mm -hmm. That's a good play by Dell. Chris Weber thinks he can take Martinez. He wants it. Yep. Gets it. He drives. Scores. Michigan has taken the lead. Well, he, he smelled that opportunity. Final 30 seconds of overtime. Michigan has fought back from four down to lead nice by one. Dent lost it. Tipped over to Rose. And he is clobbered, sandwiched by two Kentucky players. Boy, you wonder why Juwan Howard tipped that ball, Jim. The possession is so important now. If you got it in your hands, keep it. Yep, Dent the same way. You remember the dunk that he had a chance before? Here, Weber just on a spin move. Martinez just not cable hand him. And Chris Weber used that arm a little bit, sometimes called. Got away with it on that one and made the great spin move inside. 21 seconds remaining. What do you think that 1957 North Carolina oh, Kansas game felt like going three overtime? <laughs> Two for Rose, who has made four out of five tonight. He could put Michigan in front by three, which is critical considering Ford the shooter. Got one of them. That was pure. When Mashburn went out, fouled out, Kentucky led by four. Right. Jim, the whole game changed. The whole philosophy as to how you play the game changed when he went out. Got him both. A timeout has been called. 
No signal which huddle called it. We'll be right back and we'll tell you who. That was called by Michigan, and uh, they didn't signal Billy before we went to the break, so we apologize. But what about that timeout by the Wolverines? Uh, I don't think that that was a wise time to take one for a couple of reasons. It gives Kentucky an opportunity to go ahead and set up their offensive pattern, and maybe even more importantly, Jim, with just 21 seconds, you don't have the opportunity to, to go ahead and get another time. Let's suppose they tie it up 